and welcome back to another episode of A Cozy Christmas Podcast. My name is Art, and we've made it to December. Here between now and Christmas, we're going to have some new guests. Uh, There'll be some returning guests. I'm also going to be celebrating my 100th episode, which should be out around December 20th. Now, the actual 100th episode will most likely happen before that, but because of the recording schedule and everything, I thought I would just pick a, a day later on in the month to officially celebrate it. So it'll probably be like my 104th or something, but we're going to celebrate it on the episode that comes out on December 20th. So what I'm asking for you to do is to send me any questions you have that uh, about the podcast or about Christmas in general, anything you want to know about me. I'm going to do a Q&A session on the 100th episode, and uh, I'm planning to have a, a special guest on as well. That one might be a longer episode, but I think it'll be one that you'll enjoy. And I, I just think that this is worth celebrating that I've done 100 of these things. And thank you all again. I, I thank you all the time, but thank you for listening and participating. If you've been following me this year, you know that I've been really focused a lot more than in years past on reading. And this year especially, I've been hitting the cozy Christmas mystery novels that have, uh, I've been able to read several that have been, uh, that I have come to consider to be some all-time favorites. And this month I have uh, alone just two or three interviews with different cozy mystery writers. And today's guest I'm so happy to have back on. Uh, Her name is Liz Ireland, and she writes what is probably my favorite cozy mystery series right now, uh, which is the Mrs. Claus mystery series. I've talked about her books a lot. Uh, I interviewed her last year sometime. Uh, I believe it was in December of last year. I invited her back on the show this year. Uh, She has a new novel out in the series. It's book three called Mrs. Claus and the Evil Elves. So stay tuned for the interview. We'll find out all about it. We have a fun Christmas conversation as well. So I think uh, you'll enjoy this. Today on the Cozy Christmas Podcast, I have a special guest uh, with us. She's a returning guest. Uh, Her name is Liz Ireland, and she's the author of one of my favorite cozy mystery series, the Mrs. Claus uh, mystery series. The first book uh, was called Mrs. Claus and the Santa Land Slayings, and it tells the story of, well, Mrs. Claus at the North Pole solving mysteries. It's been uh, reviewed as uh, a series that's like Jessica Fletcher meeting Tim Burton. It, it's creative and witty and takes place at the North Pole. I don't know what more you need to know about this series to know that it's just perfect for me. So uh, Liz, welcome back to the Cozy Christmas Podcast. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me back. This is really great. (laughs) Yeah. uh, And I know I I told the story, I think when you're on the first time, but it was, I heard about this cozy mystery series that took place at the North Pole with Mrs. Claus. And, you know, that was all I needed to just read the book. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's really, it's really gratifying that people can hear that and and they pick it up and, and it's not, it's not like the North Pole of, you know, it's weird because everybody has their own idea of what the North Pole will be like. And so mm-hmm. it's very gratifying that people will accept my own version, which is, I don't know, slightly off kilter, cozy, but somehow also murder mystery version of the North Pole. So mm-hmm. <laughs> it makes me happy. And it was different than what I was even expecting, you know, because I've got in my mind that traditional picture of Santa and Mrs. Claus where she's, you know, an elderly woman and yeah. rosy, rosy cheeks and all that. And you know, and, and April Claus, the the main character, she's uh, she's younger, um, newly married to Santa, and uh, kind of finds herself in a unique and new situation. Um, yes, yes, because she she met Santa Claus when he was on vacation, staying at her inn in Oregon on the coast, hmm. and uh, he did not tell her who he was at at first because he was kind of there incognito, just trying to have some downtime in the summer and uh they fell in love before he 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 uh popped the question and told her who he actually was so she's been kind of surprised by it all and now she's in the north pole and she's sort of the fish out of water still even but um 
but there is a there is a kind of traditional Mrs. Claus figure in the North Pole, and that's her mother-in-law, who <laughs> is mm -hmm. is kind of the you know pink-cheeked, plump uh, bun. She has a bun and her hair in a bun, and she um, knits and. She's sort of the perfect Mrs. Claus, but she's also kind of a, a nightmarish mother-in-law <laughs> to have too. So you get a little mother-in-law conflict there. So it's the standard that April can't ever quite live up to. <laughs> right. In, in some ways, she reminds me of the the Dowager from uh, Downton Abbey. Yes. M maybe not quite as sarcastic. I don't know, but <laughs> she kind of fulfills that role. Yeah. yeah. Well, she wants April to do well, but she's just yeah. not quite sure she's up to the job of, of taking over <laughs> as Mrs. Claus. So. Uh, well, one of the things I love about your series is all, all the marvelous characters in it that that uh, populate the North Pole. Go ahead and introduce us to a few of them that we might find recurring uh, in the books. Well, there's April and there's Nick, her husband, but there's also, um, I also have some other characters in there. Nick's Nick's sister is Lucia, and she's sort of uh, kind of the Valkyrie of the, of the story. She's, she's a friend of reindeer. She's a reindeer advocate, and so she uh, is constantly in, in uh, her comp constant companion is a reindeer named Quasar, who's a misfit reindeer. He, he's of the Rudolph tribe, but he's a misfit, and so his nose is kind of fizzly, and he's not quite not quite sleigh ready, but, um, but he always, he always, you know, pulls, you know, comes to the, comes, comes to the mark in a pinch. So he's, uh, he's there. And, um, and I also have lots of uh, elves in the, in the story. It's sort of, when you mentioned Downton Abbey, there, there is a kind of upstairs, downstairs kind of uh, element to it because the people at Castle Kringle are the the clauses of course mm. but they also have um the castle elves who are doing all the all the all the work so um the the steward of the castle is named jingles and he's sort of april's partner in crime because he loves you know being her assistant you know sort of being you know the the Dr. Watson to her Sherlock sometimes and then mm. she has um a lot of friends in town she has an elf friend named Juniper who is kind of in, unlucky in love, but she's always very positive and and yep. uh, looking for the next next opportunity, love opportunity. And she's a very good friend, and they hang out together often in Christmas Town. And um, and they just a lot of uh, the there are snowmen in in the stories who who pop up and and play little parts and reindeer and. Especially in the latest book, I've tried to give uh, the reindeer and the snowman actually have have quite a bit to do and uh, have mm -hmm. have have some interesting things going on. So now in your new book, it's called Mrs. Claus and the Evil Elves, mm -hmm. uh, and that's out now. Uh, I think it, yes. came, it was released a month or two ago. Yeah. Uh, so so what can we expect in this in the new story? Well, in the new story. There's um there's good news because uh, April has a friend her best friend from Oregon is visiting um, her friend Claire is visiting mm -hmm. Santa Land so she's hoping it's going to be Christmas week and she's hoping for you know big big fun times and for for Santa Land to shine but there's a hitch in that um, there's a company um, in in Santa Land who is kind of trying to mechanize some of the work of of the of the workers in Santa land. So they've created drone delivery drones. They're calling drone deer that are kind of taking the place of deer of reindeer. Mm -hmm. And there's also somebody else who's invented a sort of uh, kind of snow hoverboard for snowmen. So the, so the reindeer are upset about the drone deer because they feel like they're being displaced out of their work. And um, the snowmen are very excited about being on hoverboards. <laughs> So they're, they're racing around for the first time in their lives. They're very mobile and they're very excited about it. Although it's there, there's some danger involved for them because <laughs> you know, reindeer uh, snowmen don't really survive crashes very well. So, no, no. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, the rain, the reindeer are on strike and the snowmen mm. are on the move. And so 
things are kind of afoot in, in Christmas town. And then one of the inventors of the drone deer disappears and no one knows what has happened. And one of the, and then one of the, um, the workers who works at the, at the place that invented the drone deer has, has also been shows up murdered. Mm. And so, uh, it looks like April's friend Juniper might be implicated. So she's trying to figure out who actually is behind all these shenanigans before her friend Juniper could get, you know, sent to jail. I am anxiously waiting for my Christmas decorations to go up so I can start reading uh, book <laughs> three. So <laughs> you have to have the perfect uh, atmosphere to read Christmas stories. <laughs> well, sometimes, not always, not always. Uh, but uh, th this one I was kind of saving as a special treat for uh, oh, good. <laughs> when, well, that's when, sweet. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, it, I, I like, I like uh, reading Christmas uh, stories in December. Mm -hmm. Um, but I tend to, I sometimes sneak them earlier too, but I, I, you know, I'm Christmas all year round at this point. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, now that you've been writing this series for a couple of years now, do you find that's getting hard to be in a mind for Christmas pretty much year round or do you kind of roll with it? It's, it's, it's sort of, it's sort of comforting, you know, it's mm. just, um, because I guess I guess because Christmas itself has its own stresses, you know. There's a lot of like December is just so busy, but mm -hmm. it's kind of nice to be in the middle of July and sitting in your room and just escaping into Christmas land for a <laughs> while. You <know>? Yeah, <laughs> and thinking about oh, you know, the happy things going on in Santa Land, you know, which are usually completely different than the, you know, the horror show or that's going on out in the real world. Yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly. So, so it's, it's very nice. My only problem with the like, continuing of the series is that it becomes harder to find elf names, but oh. you know, that's, <laughs> it's a luxury problem. <laughs> right. Well, you can always go to one of those um, elf name generators or something. And yeah, <laughs> But you have to be careful because I, I tried that once and then you get all the Lord of the Rings elf oh, names. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Elrond or whatever. Like, right. No, that's not it. And and they're definitely not the Lord of the Rings kind of elves. So no, no. <laughs> they're very yeah. uh they're very, you know, well, there are a lot of there are a lot of they're they're mostly happy elves and they love mm -hmm. to, you know, sing and you know, work and have fun, but um there are there are a lot of different personalities among the elves too. You know, there mm -hmm. there are cranky elves, there are ambitious elves, all sorts of elves. Right. Yeah, I think um, wasn't it uh, book two had kind of a cranky elf. <laughs> yeah. <I think. laughs> there are always cranky elves. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, a another theme in your book that I find um, interesting is how it's kind of like a clash of you know, like you said, the upstairs, downstairs kind of idea, but also kind of a the old school way of doing things. And then April kind of represents something new. And sometimes those ideas aren't always appreciated, you know, yeah. <laughs> or met with great suspicion. <laughs> yeah, she's always, she's always, well, like in the second book, she, you know, kind of introduces Halloween to the, mm -hmm. to the, to Santa land. And that, you know, that comes with its own own set of challenges and problems and uh but also it 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 gives a chance for the elves to have their own take on on different ideas you know it's kind of they're culturally appropriating you know april's april's traditions for their own use and yes. i always i always enjoy that you know yeah and, and so the series has great humor to it and uh you know especially I, I i was laughing a lot in that second one like you said misunderstanding and and reimagining of what even april's trying to do and then it doesn't always go off well <laughs> yeah and sometimes she just doesn't know quite what's going on or what's expected and you know she, sure she hears that she's supposed to make reindeer cookies and she just thinks you know cookies shaped like reindeer and <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work out very well. Right. No. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So I love, I love doing stuff like that and discovering stuff like that along the way. I'm right now mm. I'm writing a, a book that's, that's basically a Thanksgiving book for, and, uh, so that's, that's a whole other 
set of challenges for Santa Lens. Mm. <laughs> Dealing with the uh, pilgrims and turkeys. <laughs> <laughs> and parades uh, oh fun <laughs> in the middle of winter yeah, yeah. <laughs> now um so that uh I, so from what you said uh we can expect some more books in this series then yes next year i've got a i'm gonna have um a halloween novella in a halloween collection next year mm. and that one is mrs claus and the candy corn caper and uh, after that, uh, there will be a Thanksgiving book. It's called uh, Mrs. Claus and the Trouble with Turkeys. And uh, so that's that's next up. And then there will be another one in 2024, I think. So it's hard to even think about 2024 right now. Because <laughs> yeah. That sounds like, you know, talking about the year 3000 or something to me. But Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, there there is a... a... There's a movie coming out that my son and I want to see, and it's coming out in February of 2023. And I was <laughs> I was telling him about, oh, we've got such a long time to wait for this film and all this. And he's like, Dad, that's in three months. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Less. Like, <laughs> three months? <laughs> oh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's not long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm still, you know, I'm still amazed that we're in the 2020s. So. Sure. <laughs> I'm not sure we're going to all survive, but yeah, I know. <laughs> oh my! Basically, everyone needs to run out and get this, uh, buy these books, so that the series can continue on forever and ever. And oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a real uh, charming series, and it's just a delight to read. And um, thank you. It, it's it's kind of becoming one of my uh, Christmas traditions now to to read one during the christmas season although it only started last year really so yeah <laughs> but it, it's a new tradition i've decided so. <laughs> great <laughs> speaking of christmas uh how, what do you have any uh, exciting plans you're looking forward to this year no this is looking like a very calm christmas um Good. my family is all far away they're in texas mm -hmm. and i'm in british columbia so you know by the time christmas rolls around i'm sort of you know you know the, the 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 busyness is is all done and i'm it's a relaxing time so mm. that's always nice actually mm -hmm. <laughs> to tell you the truth <laughs> um, it's just my husband and me and you know whatever activities are going on around here which is mm. which is nice mm -hmm. i've been involved in a lot of um uh, music groups you know, like concert band um and we do uh charity concerts uh usually at senior homes Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a big retirement area, and so there are a lot of, a lot of senior activities to be done, and uh, thinking about them and how, you know, Christmas is a happy time, but it can also be kind of nostalgic and sometimes even lonely. So it's mm -hmm. it's good to remember, you know, the seniors and go play music for them, and you know, go get some uh, gifts for the senior uh, senior home gift trees from the you know, the drugstore or wherever. So it's yeah. good to do. Oh, that's, that's a neat idea. Um, we, we have, uh, we live in a very, very small town, like 700 people small. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is a, a retirement home here in town and with our, um, our church, our church gets a group together and we go and carol for them in December. Um, and, and it's amazing. It, it's, it costs us nothing but time. And yet you'd think that we brought them, you know, the most lavish presence yes. uh, just, just by showing up and singing. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if you, do you play any instruments at all or do you, are you a singer? I do. I, um, I'm involved in a concert band, but we have a, we have a, actually it's a, a concert band for adults who are learning instruments. So hmm. um, I'm always learning a new instrument just to stay in my concert band. Oh, <laughs> so oh fun. Right now I'm playing euphonium um, hmm. and learning it. And uh, so we are an adult learning band, and so we spend usually most of the fall learning Christmas carols to go play for you know various places, uh, either in the public or at senior homes and things like that. Oh wow, that's neat. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a good organization. Yeah. I also play uh, with friends too, and so we get together and play you know Christmas songs or just classical music just on our own. And you, we usually have a big uh, Christmas. There's usually a Christmas soiree you know, where we play for each other, which is fun too. That's, that's such a fun idea. Yeah. Cause not only will that help keep 
you know, your mind fresh and, and always learning something new and all mm-hmm. that, but then you can use that to encourage others. That's, that's kind of fun. That's a fun yeah. idea. Yeah. It's a great, it's a great organization, uh, playing music in a, you know, in a, in an adult band, you know, for adult learners, it's, uh, mm-hmm. it's a great way for people to just, you know, have somewhere to go every week and socialize and, you know, if there's mm-hmm. no, it's not high pressure. We're not trying to get to Carnegie hall or anything. Yeah, <laughs> so right. It's it's just a lot of fun. So yeah, a couple of years ago, uh, I, I decided to try, uh, to learn guitar. Mm-hmm. Um, and my, my, my son had played it for a few years and I kind of liked it. So I, I, I got one and learned along and, you know, I, I got the, maybe the four or five basic chords down and that's about <laughs> it, but you know, if I, I can use the capo, I can pr- play quite a few songs if I just strum it. <laughs> yeah. Four chords gets you pretty far on a guitar, but yes, it does. Yeah. I, I never quite understand guitar. My husband plays guitar. And so I'm always looking at what he can really play. And I just think, how are they doing that? And I, it never mm-hmm. quite ma- makes sense to me. If they're playing or when you listen to somebody like Django Reinhardt, you know, who's sure, actually yeah. doing like very complex melodies. You know, I just never couldn't understand what he's up to. <laughs> There's, and I can't think of the guy's name off the top of my head, but, but he, he has, he's a beautiful guitarist and he has this fantastic Christmas album of just acoustic guitar, you know, and there's one song in particular he does that I, I swear he's got like four hands on that thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's amazing it's what like, people can do on it. <laughs> How did you do that? <laughs> yeah. Because I worked at it for about six months once and all I learned to do was just strum. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh man. Yeah. It, well, some people are just incredibly talented and the rest of us just try to keep up. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I, I enjoyed trying to learn it, you know, just as, as a hobby and, and, you know, now if we go Christmas caroling, I can, sometimes I'll bring the guitar along and, oh yeah, that's try, good. And yeah. have something there. But, um, my, my kids are all just really so good at music and singing especially um oh wow yeah that would be great uh, i can't sing so (laughs) i i I, i'm okay i you know i don't make the dog start howling or anything but (laughs) (laughs) but my 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 kids uh all just are so talented and and so we we just say we they get them from they get it from their mother and (laughs) (laughs) when i was in school my um I was I I was doing terribly in a in a calculus class and I wanted to I I'd taken it for about a week and I realized that I was going to you know go down in flames <laughs> so I begged my my school um guidance counselor if I could drop calculus and she said you can drop calculus as long as you join the choir because we only have 5 people no <laughs> <laughs> and so she said are you a soprano and I said if I need to drop calculus, I'll be a soprano for <laughs> for a year. <laughs> so after that, I have never wanted to sing. Okay. <laughs> Still have scary flashbacks of, <laughs> <laughs> of doing that for a year. Yeah. I would join a choir to get out of math. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. Not, not, I wouldn't even think about it. I'd be like, yep, sign me up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <I don't, laughs> okay. <laughs> math wasn't my thing. Yeah. I. <laughs> Surprising no one. My favorite was uh, English class, especially lit class, you know, learning about stories and books. And <laughs> so it's a big surprise, I know. To <laughs> Well, I'm always surprised when that isn't people's favorite class, you know, sure. <laughs> when I, when I, when I, I just think, wow, people who, you know, who they'll, they'll, they'll tell me, oh, I really didn't like uh, school because or English in school because they made you read, you know, Jane Austen or Charles Dickens mm. or something. And I just think, Oh my God, that was, yeah. that was what kept me going. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Come on. This is a class where I get graded for reading a book. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Talk about an EDA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my, yeah. So anyway, back back on track here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <But> no, <laughs> I, I, great great ideas. Just uh, to find so, simple and fun ways to uh, just be a part of your community and bring Christmas cheer to uh, to those who might need it. As like you said, it's it can be hard for them, uh, you know, in the nursing home or retirement home that 
you know, I've, I've gotten to um, get to know some of the folks here in our retirement home and uh, yeah, they have family like you all over the United States and they don't always are able to, to make it here and they're not able to travel. So it can be a hard yeah. and, and lonely time for them. Yeah. And, and you know, yeah. the older you get, the more you realize like, you know, so much of Christmas, it's, it's, it, it just sort of, sort of pokes your memory. You know, you think mm -hmm. about, it makes you nostalgic, makes you think about the past, you know, and these are people with long pasts and it's probably remembering a lot of people that aren't there with them anymore. It's just, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's good to give them something that keeps them in the, in the now in the present too, you know, happy, yeah. happy memory. So. Yeah, you can be a mediocre musician, and they'd probably <laughs> really appreciate you just coming. Uh, that's been my experience, anyway. <laughs> well, my my band is far from expert. <laughs> you know, we, <laughs> there are some times when I think, oh, mm, <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know if we're ready for this, but you know, uh, yeah. they can always turn down their hearing aids or <laughs> you know, <laughs> you wheel are. to the next room or something. Like this. Yeah. yeah. My, my daughter's school did, has a choir and when she was in, I think it was sixth, fifth or sixth grade, they had, they had like a little tra traveling choir that would go around to a couple of places mm -hmm. in town, just not far, you know, just, and, and so they'd go to the nursing home and retirement home and boy, they loved seeing the kids show up. That was just really special to them. So, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but and they were pretty good kids choir, I thought, but I'm, I'm a little prejudiced on that. <laughs> My daughter is, yes, yes. <laughs> he's the best singer by far. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Big talent. <laughs> yeah. Well, she, she just had tried out for a, a part in their, she's in uh, junior high now. And so there was a solo part for the upcoming Christmas concert. And so she tried out for it and didn't get it. You know, my first response is, well, I, I, I got to call your music teacher what, <laughs> what's he thinking you know yeah well you know i managed to not blurt that out because it's it's good for her to you know to go out and try out for things but sometimes it's good to to not get everything you try out for either you know you, you learn how to deal with that and yeah it's it's definitely one of those steps you have to go through i was a theater kid and you uh, know uh it's just uh learning to how to accept not getting what you want is one of those things you have to have to learn early. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. not going to get the star part. <laughs> My oldest son, it seemed like anything he tried out for, he got, he just so talented with music and acting and everything. It was, it was really fun. So then there was uh, one state choir he tried out for, and didn't get the part and it was kind of surprising like whoa yeah. <laughs> you, you did it like, what is this <laughs> <laughs> is that even possible <laughs> but yeah. this this i mean this was a really kind of elite kind of choir so i mean and he's good but the the kids chosen were you know crazy good yeah. so next level although i thought he could he should have been but again you know <laughs> that's my that's a parent in me <laughs> yeah all right where are we okay uh, <laughs> no. could you uh, again just walk us through how did this idea of setting a cozy mystery in the north pole come up come about well actually it was it was uh suggested to me um because the publisher needed a holiday book i think and mm -hmm. uh and so my editor i've been working with him for like 20 years or so um uh, he said, well, what about a, doing a, 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 a book where there's a kind of Mrs. Claus, uh, character as the sleuth. And he was thinking, I think, you know, Mrs. You know, somebody owns a, a knitting store and her name is Mrs. Claus or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said, you know, you could even, you could set it wherever you want. I don't really care. And at that point I had just come off of writing a historical mystery uh, I was writing historical mysteries, which were very, um, they were very, uh, you had to do a lot of research. I had to do a lot of research and very intensive, you know, worrying about getting the details right, every, everything you wrote. And um, so I, I just had this vision all of a sudden, I just thought, oh, you know, just do a complete fantasy story as of Mrs. Claus and Santa Land solving murders. And um and so that's that's 
what I jumped on. I was like, oh no, I'm gonna, <laughs> it's gonna be Mrs. Claus in Santa Land, you know, the ultimate cozy town, Christmas town. Um, and, you know, we're gonna have mm. lots of, lots of, lots of mayhem. And uh, I think at that point, I was, I just watched The Crown. So I was sort of thinking of the clauses as sort of this royal family of, you know, and kind of the intrigue going on in the in the in the Kringle Heights section of of, of mm. Santa Land. So um so I that had that had a lot of that in it too. Um and the upstairs, downstairs, you know, elf intrigue, you know, um the kind of politics of, you know, clauses and elves and yeah. <laughs> which I always <laughs> love. Um uh, there are still some elves who feel like they're doing all the work. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, you work one day a year. Come on. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and then there are the reindeer who are, you know, completely competitive and 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 sort of jerky, like they were in in Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. So, um, sure. Yeah. So I always enjoy visiting with them too. <laughs> yeah. 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 I always thought of them as like the that. The, the cocky athlete, uh, you know, yes. of the story, you know, that <laughs> they can do everything and any, everything well and perfect and <laughs> yes, super intense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if you can't do it, what are you doing? You know? Right. <laughs> That's why I, I feel sorry for poor Quasar, you know, <laughs> he's <Yeah>. trying. <laughs> <laughs> the, whole, the whole emphasis on, you know, winning and, you know, competitiveness and, you know, if you're not yeah. competing, then what's the point? Right. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> that that actually reminds me a lot of the, the kids uh, at our school that my, my in my daughter's <laughs> class. Uh, you know, they'll be playing um, even badminton uh, during PE, and and she she's you know some of the these games she's learning for the first time. You know, like volleyball and different things mm -hmm. and. She's like, everyone yelling at me because I'm not doing some things right. And, yeah. and it's like, this is not the playoffs here. This is, <laughs> this is a game in PE class. Come on. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and, well, if there was anything I ever I wanted to take out of, you know, uh, the lesson I learned from school, you know, and which I would love to pass on to kids would be to, you know, you don't have to be the best. I mean, that's mm -hmm. one of the lies they tell you is that you mm -hmm. have to be good at what you're doing, or you have to strive to be the best at what you're doing. You have to, mm -hmm. school is about trying to find things that you enjoy, you know, or also stuff that you're good at. But I mean, especially in terms of sports or, you know, choir or band or whatever, the important thing is, you know, to make this something that you want to do with your, you know, for fun during mm -hmm. your life. And, uh, you know, if you win a game in eighth grade volleyball, it's, you know, it's great, but it's, you know, if you lose, it's not the end of the world either. You know, <laughs> yeah. the important thing is, you know, you're, you're, you're doing something you in, really enjoy and learning mm -hmm. to get better at it every time you do it. And, you know, I've never understood the competitiveness of, you know, children's sports. It always right. makes me a little sad. <laughs> yeah. 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 We, we've we gone to some high school football games and I mean, it's, it's like the stereotypical parent in the bleachers, you know, yelling and screaming mm -hmm. at the refs. And uh, there was one game in particular, we, uh, there's a couple sitting behind us that they were getting so angry i mean they were swearing they were uh screaming and i don't even think they had a kid playing in the game they were just <laughs> they were just there and like you guys you, guys need, oh, that to makes it all better. you just need to calm down a little bit yeah. <laughs> um, oh my gosh that yeah that's funny <laughs> uh yeah uh it, it well it, you know it's that the whole uh midwest culture of football and all that yes. it's a it's alive and well here and i i tell people i'm not really a football fan and they look at me like i'm you know from outer space <laughs> yeah i grew up in texas and i you know oh, yeah. and i you know wouldn't even care if i never saw another football game ever in my life you know so yeah wasn't wasn't a huge fan uh you know and, but you know the whole whole world down there was sort of you know although the academic world was sort of you know centered around football and 
you mm. know, the only reason we had a music program was because there was, you needed to have a marching band for football, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, which, yeah. you know, was kind of good actually, because it did get us a music program, which, you know, <laughs> now music programs are being cut everywhere. So. Mm. All right. Well, a couple more questions here. Uh, let's uh, get a couple of Christmassy questions for you. Oh. I want to ask, uh, so what is your favorite part of Christmas? I think my favorite part of Christmas is Christmas, that Christmas, uh, you know, the days around Christmas when it's just calm, you know, especially mm -hmm. kind of the week after Christmas, Christmas, between Christmas and New Year's. I just love that just kind of calm of, you know, being able to kind of contemplate, think about the next year, make lists for, you know, to do lists. Uh, you know, kind of resolution lists. Uh, that's always my favorite part of the year, you know, because you're thinking about this fresh start you're about to get. I don't know why you mm. think there's going to be a fresh start just because the calendar changes. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it does feel like that. So, um, yeah, so I love that week. I love like watching Christmas movies and mm. uh, just the calm of it. I, it's, it's kind of that, it's that kind of payoff for all the chaos of the, of the end of the year feeling um that i like mm -hmm. um i love christmas movies i love uh you know reading finally having a week where you feel like nobody can contact you um with work and stuff <laughs> so yeah yeah you can take off and just read and you know relax and have a good time yeah that visiting with friends yeah that week between christmas and new year's is just one of the best weeks i find it to just to take off and if you can just relax, uh, read, eat, eat all the junk food you have left over from Christmas and yes, you know, yeah. enter the new year in a sugar coma or something, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's where yeah. the resolutions come in. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Now I got to go and exercise. Yeah. <laughs> well then, uh, my, uh, uh second question I was going to ask is, uh, what, what makes Christmas cozy, uh, for you? Probably I love, I love just the, uh, the food and the movies. I love watching mm -hmm. old classic Christmas movies. I actually, I, I watched one last night because <laughs> getting a jump on things, oh, sure. you know, yeah. I saw one and I thought, Oh, I have to watch that. Um, so I love, I just love, uh, I love the Christmas movies. I love the food, love, uh, I don't know, just visiting. That's what makes things cozy for me with visiting with friends, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, Wonderful. Sure. Yeah. I, yeah. I guess I know that the two questions kind of overlap a little bit, but I think just being able to, to do nothing, you, you know, mm -hmm. that we need that sometimes to just, all right, I'm putting my to-do list aside. I'm even if it's just for today, I'm going to sit and I'm going to read, I'm going to talk. I'm going to put my phone away, you know, <laughs> we yeah. can do it. We can do that. Uh, even if it's just for one day and, yeah. you know, spend time with family. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, just in, and just kind of being in your own, you know, thoughts and plans and I don't know, it's, it's a good time, I think yeah. for thinking and uh, planning and, and kind of getting your, your mental house in order is kind of how I think of it. You know, <laughs> I like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, most, most years I, my mental house is a bit of a disaster by, by the end of the year. <laughs> yes. like, uh, right now it needs a thorough cleaning. When yeah. I think about my mental house. <laughs> exactly. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. I need a, a, a platoon of elves to come help me. <laughs> There you are. <laughs> well, if anyone deserves to to have it, uh, surely you know Santa or can get in contact with somebody. And... <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and then I was going to ask if you had any um, uh, book recommendations you could make us, uh, you could give to us for uh, maybe some of your favorite cozy Christmas reads, or um, not necessarily mysteries, but uh, mm -hmm. really just any. Any book you like to read this time of year that you'd recommend to us? Well, I do. I I have every year. Geez, this is gonna, every year I listen to a Christmas Carol. Um, it's mm -hmm. my favorite. You know, it's my favorite Christmas story. Um, it's one of my favorite books. Um, 
and I have, I was looking on my Audible account and I've got, um, I think I've got three, <laughs> three <laughs> versions of A Christmas Carol on audio. I don't know how I had three. Um, I hope at least one of them was free. I'm not sure. <laughs> but, um, and last year, I think it was last year, um, the actor Hugh Grant came out with a version of, of The Christmas Carol and mm -hmm. he does a really good job. I, you know, I'd always been a big, uh, I think it was Tim Curry um, mm -hmm. was my favorite, but he, Hugh Grant is really good. Um, does a really good job at it. And uh, so I usually listen to it, you know, once, at least once, sometimes twice. Uh, and then, you know, it'll send me scurrying to my copy to read along some of it. Um, so I really love that. And then you read it last year too. So yes. I enjoyed that. Oh, good. Um, yes. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, and what else? Uh, oh, and this year, um, I bought this last year, but I didn't read it. Um, and so I've started it now. It's called A Christmas Carol Murder mm -hmm. uh, by the author Heather Redmond. Do you know that author? Yep. Um, she yep. does the Charles Dickens uh, as sleuth kind of series. And so I was yeah. going to read, I've read uh, Grave Expectations. And so I was going to read A Christmas Carol Murder this December. Um, and I was thinking my favorite book last year for Christmas was um, one of my favorite cozy mystery authors is, uh, her name is Ellen Byron, but she also writes a series as uh, Maria Dorico. Um, and her, her series that has a book called It's Beginning to Look a Lot Like Murder um, is about a woman who runs uh, uh, a catering business or catering hall business with her family who's Italian in Queens. It's kind of mob adjacent. Mm. And uh, there's lots of just fun, like it's just kind of, I don't know, I don't want to say married to the mobish, but it's just very... Uh, you know, it's very Italian, New York, uh, you know, people have decorations, Christmas decorations with, you know, Tony Bennett statuary, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's just, uh, it's just, uh, you know, Italian grandmas making, you know, lots of, lots of Italian food and, and oh, there, yeah. are, there are um, recipes in the back, um, mm. which I've never tried, but I always look at and think, hmm. <laughs> Yeah. If I ever, <laughs> somebody make mood. this for me. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was a very funny, that was a very funny uh, Christmas story. Lots of cozy, oh. lots of cozy series always do a cozy mystery for Christmas um, or two. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of my favorite authors have some of those like Laura Levine. Um, mm. uh, Carlene O'Connor does, like, mm -hmm. uh, I think it was murder, murder at Christmas. Uh, murder, murder in a Christmas Irish, village, Irish or Christmas. no, Ir murder Irish in an Christmas. Irish, yeah, something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So yeah. I love that series, and you know, so usually I can find, you know, a cozy, cozy mystery Christmas story to read during Christmas. Mm. From one of my favorites. But I, I, I just had to look on my Audible because I knew I had more than a couple of Christmas Carol recordings. What are your it. favorite versions? Um, let's see. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's shameful. Eight. I think. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, okay. So you, you're, uh, I don't, I feel better now. You feel better now. Okay. Because I was um, looking at mine and then I was looking at the ones I didn't have and I was thinking, mm -hmm. oh, Tom yeah. Baker, Tom Baker does one and that sounds oh, pretty good. <laughs> I, I don't have that one. Yeah. Um, I, I have, uh, I have Tim Curry's, which yes. is good. Um, He's really good. I have the uh, one read by Patrick Stewart, uh, but that's more of like an adaptation. Um, it's not the full story. I don't think Jim Dale has one that oh, really? I, I enjoy. He, he narrated the Harry Potter series. Yeah. In, um, actually, so my favorite though is read by Gerald Dickens, uh, which is Charles Dickens's great great grandson. Really, um, and wow. he's got one on there as well. And I've seen him; he does like a one man show of of A Christmas Carol, and I've gotten to see him um, quite a few times. And uh, well, let's see, last year's I think it was Miriam Margulies was the one I I got from last year, and which she was fantastic. Uh, yeah, like. She does both the male and female voices really well, which 
I, I think she's a really good reader. Yeah. You know, I have another, I have another classic book that she's, I think it's, I don't want to say it's, it might be a Mrs. Gaskell. I'm not sure if it's, mm. uh, but yeah, I have another book where she's reading. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's a Dickens book. It's Dombey and Son. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she does a really good job. With yeah. Dickens. Yeah. Um, my, she, she's one of my, uh, dream dream guests if i could ever get her on show. <laughs> have you have you ever seen interviews with her uh, a few yeah 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 she's quite she's something <laughs> she, she, she can come out with pretty surprising stories <laughs> yeah i uh i listened to her um uh autobiography that came out uh i think this last year and there was more information in there than i cared to know about her <laughs> so i'm like oh okay <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> i've just that. i've seen her do interviews where she just comes out with the most outrageous stuff and i just think oh my gosh like nobody on that stage is ready for <laughs> to <hear> this woman <laughs> talking about this might but have to be up. <laughs> a cozy christmas after dark or something yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway but um, yeah i i always love it when she appears in a I know she's been in several Dickens adaptations and different things. And uh, she's always just is a fun, uh, fun presence. So <laughs> yeah, she's very entertaining. Mm -hmm. You know, I have one or two audio versions I, I love and I listen to like, especially the Gerald Dickens one. Uh, and like this year, I wasn't able to see him. He usually comes to Omaha and, but it didn't work out for us to go and see him this year. So I, I'll especially make sure to listen to his version this year. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll read that story like at least once, sometimes uh, two or more times <laughs> in a year. Yeah. It's, it's the best Christmas story. Oh, yeah. um, but, but I should have known that, you know, you would have had a, a <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will say that a lot of them were probably free or I got on sale or something, you know, um, I might have a lot, but I'm also a cheapskate. So <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, but it's just, I don't know. There's something about, I don't know. I'm a big rereader anyway. I've mm. always been, I mean, my husband is always thinking, didn't you, is always saying, didn't you read that? Didn't you watch mm -hmm. that? Haven't you seen that? <laughs> and I'll think, you know, I just love, I don't know. There's like going on a roller coaster, you know, a million times. Like you just want to like experience it again. Right. And, uh, and there's something about a Christmas Carol that it's just it's such a good story, and you know it just it it's just so emotional, you know it's just mm -hmm. uh, it just hits the spot, especially in December. I have to look yeah. up Gerald Dickens. Yeah, Gerald need, Dickens. Yeah, I need to um, look that up. Yeah, he's he's got a few of Dickens's stories on there on on Audible. I think at one time he was trying to record all of Dickens's work, but. Unfortunately, a couple of them have like uh, errors in them, you know, where he, uh, hmm. like some, the editor, whoever edited it, didn't catch him messing up a few times, but, uh, <laughs> but you did. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, it's, it's pretty obvious. Yeah. You know, uh, he'll, he'll repeat a line. I, I think the Christmas Carol one is, is, is good is, is edited and everything. So hmm. uh, yeah, it, it's it, just his voice. It, it's such a warm and, perfect for it you know and, and he loves the text so much you can tell you know it's it's something he performs every year the reason why i get so many different copies you know if i like the author or the reader you know like i got the, I, did, I did notice i do have the hugh grant one um like mary margulies um different people like that you know they each bring their own interpretation to it even though it's the same text the the tone and inflection and different things sometimes gives you a better understanding of the story and um yeah. and, it, and it's enjoyable and it's I, i'm like a big... watching it's like watching mm -hmm. a different adaptation of a of a novel you know mm -hmm. you, that you know i mean or watch why would you would watch you know sherlock holmes again when, it's been, <laughs> when there have been like 20 people who've already you've done really great jobs as sherlock holmes but you know yeah it's just such a it's such a fun fun i don't know uh set up for for someone to interpret you know yeah in their own way uh, definitely it, it's and, and that's why i'm a big fan of rereading too is that i will get something different out of it and um you know having read a christmas carol 
I'm sure more than 20 times by now. It's, I know that might drive some people crazy, but I, I'll do it every year because there's something new or something that's not new, but I just, I needed to be reminded of this or that. And there, there were quite a few things of about a Christmas Carol that really came out in my mind, you know, even in the last three or four years of things that we've gone through as mm-hmm. a world. And then like, wait a minute, Dickens is talking about that very thing that's happening right now. Yes. I uh, noticed that this, too, yeah. that when he's talking, he's talking pretty globally about like, you know, look at all mm-hmm. the world of, you know, people, you know, and it's just, uh, mm-hmm. it's just kind of amazing, kind of an amazing story. Yeah, really is. Yeah. Well, I gotta, I gotta wrap this up here. My, my, <laughs> my daughter's gonna, no, it's, it's my, my daughter's gonna be out of school. Rambling. So I gotta go pick her up. But this is the Christmas content our people demand. So, oh, good. <laughs> uh, I always joke that I don't think I could ever get through an interview without it coming back to Dickens somehow. So, <laughs> oh, well, that's good though. I mean, yeah. Everything yeah. should kind of come back to Dickens or, right. or somebody from, from the 19th century because they were the first, well, not the first, but they were the best, you know, mm. storytellers, I think. I think so. Yeah. They set the, they set the template for us. Yeah. I, I just finished rereading Pickwick papers and mm. uh, that, you know, for an 800 page book, I'm just tearing through it because it's such a fun story. <laughs> yeah. It's very yeah. Uh, episodic, right? I haven't, I read yeah. that a long, long time ago and um I just yeah. and th- remember Sam Weller being very mm-hmm. funny and oh yeah. yeah. And there's some great Christmas chapters in that one. So <laughs> it, co- it comes back to Dickens again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Should. All right. Well, Liz, um, thank you so much for giving your time today. Uh, where can we find you online and, and get your books? Oh, well, I'm online everywhere. I have um I'm on uh Liz Bass, Liz Ireland at wordpress.com. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter at uh, Writes Liz um, and uh, on Instagram at Liz Bass, uh, Liz, Liz Ireland author. I keep name, saying my real name instead of my, <laughs> my pseudonym, <laughs> ad author. And I think that's it, isn't okay. it? Well, Facebook, I'm on Facebook yeah. too, under Liz Ireland author. Perfect. Well, if you want to follow her, her social media accounts, uh, Whichever ones are ex- in existence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Twitter might be on its way out. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> it's the apocalypse. The apocalypse is happening. That's oh. right. <laughs> uh, and uh, your books are available on Amazon all over. And I, I got your latest one at Barnes and Noble. I was excited to oh, find great. it. So, yeah. Um, yeah, they're everywhere. So uh, run out to your bookstores, get get her books, and you'll have a great time this this Christmas season reading them. So, uh, Liz, thank you for joining us today, and oh, thank um, you. Best of luck to you in in the coming future. Yeah, and good luck to you, and Merry Christmas. Yes, Merry Christmas, <laughs> and Merry Christmas, everybody. I want to thank you so much for stopping by and listening to the Cozy Christmas Podcast. Uh, Make sure you follow me on social medias. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Also, if you'd like to help support the show in a financial way, you can check out the links in the show notes. I have a merchandise store. I have an Etsy store with some handmade ornaments and other podcast merch there as well as a t-shirt store. But also, if you make any donation to ko-fi.com, and that's again ko-fi.com backslash Cozy Christmas, I will send you a bookmark or sticker uh, along with a Christmas card. And well, that will do it for today. So until next time, be sure to be kind to each other and do good. And let's remember to honor Christmas in our heart and try to keep it all the year. Have a very Merry Christmas.